You're watching Good Morning Sun Coast at 5. You know, there's so many elements go into the making of a great justice of the Supreme Court. President Trump has another chance to appoint another Supreme Court justice. The partisan battle that lies ahead in the Senate confirmation process. Student activists from Broward County draw a large crowd to downtown Sarasota, the message they're hoping to send. And summer is here. We've got some tips on keeping your power bill in check. Good morning, Sunco starts right now. Good morning, hope you slept well. I'm Ray Collins, five o'clock Thursday, June 28th. Stephanie Webb is off this week. John Scalzi has details now of another day with some AM showers uh, coastal and PM showers inland. You got it. I listen to you. You got it. We might have another round of uh, evening showers that could feature a few coastal showers, but basically it's going to be an inland in the afternoon. We're looking at a few scattered showers now in progress off the coastal waters, and one actually has made it onshore now, but it's a very brief shower around the mouth of uh, Charlotte Harbor. That one will be dying out here within the next 15 minutes or so. So that's the situation, a westerly wind kind of encouraging coastal showers through about noontime today. In fact, noontime will probably be the maximum for our rain chances near the coast. And then everything begins to move inland. Lots of sunshine around today, but there's also a fair amount of cloud cover out there this morning. We'll have a daytime high that tops out warm around 92, and we'll have a heat index that uh, probably cracks the 100 mark again today. A 40% chance of rainfall, just a little bit better than it was yesterday. It's kind of centered near the coast around the noontime hour. Then everything moves inland. There might be another chance at a brief shower during the evening. We'll talk about that coming up in just a few. Okay, it's a deal. Talk to you soon, John. Yeah, State Road 64 is showing some congestion early on today over the Braden River eastbound as you head toward the interstate. Also, 301 northbound toward the downtown area. Let's check the northern half of Sarasota County now. We'll find out that uh, Bee Ridge right now has some congestion eastbound as you head from Beneva toward Tuttle. Also, a little blip there way out there on, uh, let's see what is that? It's uh, uh, the road from Longboat Key back towards St. Armand Circles showing some uh, congestion there, Gulf of Mexico Drive. So be aware of that after you pass Moat and head toward the circle. Let's go to our final map now and find out that is uh, all clear besides some minor congestion by the uh, Bypass 41. 502 right now. Work is underway at the White House to choose a new Supreme Court justice to replace the retiring Andrew Kennedy. As ABC's Linda Lopez tells us, the eventual nominee will likely face party politics in the nomination process. At a rally in North Dakota for Republican Senate candidate Kevin Kramer, President Trump wasting no time addressing the upcoming vacancy on the Supreme Court. Justice Kennedy's retirement makes the issue of Senate control one of the vital issues of our time. The president making it clear he's aware his choice could reshape the court for decades to come. We have to pick one that's going to be there for 40 years, 45 years. Justice Anthony Kennedy, who was appointed by Ronald Reagan and served for six administrations, often sided with conservatives, but also wasn't afraid to side with liberals to be the deciding vote in landmark cases, upholding affirmative action, on abortion, reaffirming Roe v. Wade, and ruling for marriage equality. His decisions, making him the crucial swing vote on the court, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell promising to confirm Kennedy's successor before November's midterm elections. The Senate stands ready to fulfill its constitutional role. But McConnell blocked a vote on Obama nominee Merrick Garland until after the 2016 presidential election, and Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer insisting there should be no vote before the midterms. Millions of people are just months away from determining the senators who should vote to confirm or reject the president's nominee anything but that would be the absolute height of hypocrisy. Schumer saying the fate of health care, reproductive rights for women, and other protections for the middle class are at stake. Now, Republicans have just a one-vote majority in the Senate, so all eyes in this battle will be on Democrats to see if they'll try to sway a handful of pro-abortion rights Republicans to vote with them. Linda Lopez, ABC News, New York. Students from Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Broward County spent the day in Sarasota yesterday. It's part of the group's National March for Our Lives tour. 200 people filled the room at the Selby Library last night to hear the student activists. Their school was the site of last February's massacre that left 17 dead in Broward County. 
Earlier in the day, the students were on Siesta Key, urging people to register to vote. They say it's all about getting people involved in the process. I want them to take away the fact that they have more power than they know. That while it may seem like there's some people who have control over everything and that we're just kind of powerless, we're the disenfranchised citizens of America, that we hold the power. This is our democracy and we have a voice in it. This March for Our Lives tour began last month in Chicago and will last all summer long. Back at their high school, two security guards have lost their jobs. The security monitors were criticized for not confronting the shooter during the February 14th massacre. The school board last night opted to not reappoint the men during a meeting. One of the monitors told police that he saw the shooter quickly walk onto campus with his head down and carrying a large bag as if, quote, he was on a mission. The monitor said he notified another monitor about a suspicious person, and a minute later, he began hearing gunshots. An on-campus armed sheriff deputy was also fired after the massacre. The fight against the opioid epidemic continues here in Florida. A measure aimed at stopping addictions that often turn to street drugs takes effect next week. Limits will be placed now on prescriptions that doctors can write for treatment of acute pain. It will only be a three-day supply unless deemed medically necessary. The bill also requires physicians to check with a statewide database before prescribing or dispensing controlled substances. I see this as one, one part of it. Um, there's uh, lots of parts uh, to this uh, epidemic, and, um, but, but this is a, a critical part in helping um, um, get, get to the bottom of it. So exempt from all this, cancer patients, those who are terminally ill, and those who suffer from major trauma, they'd be exempt from the prescribing limits. The new drug law is one of more than 100 laws that take effect in Florida on July 1st. So consumer news, now you've been renting for a while and you think it's time to finally buy a home. Real estate experts say there are three things you should do before you take the leap. In today's Consumer Watch, Mary Maloney has some tips on buying a house. Got it? Yep, got it. Before you even consider buying a home, make sure your financial house is in order. Real estate experts recommend make sure your job is stable, stick to a budget, and spend less than you earn. If you're in that situation, you should be very motivated to buy a home because rents are going to keep going up. Next, talk to a lender. They'll tell you whether you're able to take out a loan. Then, make sure you're comfortable making a mortgage payment. For some people, it's not worth eating in every single day or driving a Civic instead of a Mercedes. They'd rather rent a house and be able to have some of those things. If you're going to be a homeowner, you reasonably need to expect that you may need to make some balances and some number crunching in your budget so that you can afford it. And last but not least, save enough money for down payment. So if you're ready to get off the fence and into the housing market, go for it. Experts say it's a wise investment for your finances and your future. Once you get this bug and you decide, I really want to own a home, I really want to buy an investment property, we start looking deeper into our finances and we start making cutbacks and things we don't need to help us strive towards the goal that's a worthy one. I'm Mary Maloney. Other consumer news now, as the temperatures continue to rise, so too does your power bill. I'm sure you know that for a fact. Experts say there are ways you can stay cool without spending more. Ceiling fans are really one of the best ways to help you with your comfort in your home. You can run your thermostat a little bit higher, and if you're in a room where you've got ceiling fans, that will make it feel about three or four or five degrees lower. You also may want to close your blinds in the daytime and seal up any small leaks you have around your doors or windows. Still ahead on Good Morning Suncoast, officers are worried this morning after an unusual incident in Texas left an officer hospitalized. We'll explain. Later in the hour, a Chick-fil-A employee goes above and beyond helping a choking customer. It's all caught on camera. 5.09 right now. Time for a peek at the New York City skyline. Some rain there right now. 70 degrees. Not much rain in our forecast, John. Well, not for the coastal residents, but the inland residents could get another good round of showers possibly later on today. Uh, none of the inclement weather boxes are going to be checked. Not the rain, fog, wind or temps box. Although we will see showers around, but basically in inland areas and the showers that we do see near the coast will be light in nature. 
The uh, forecast for red tide again shows red tide from Siesta Key southward to Gasparilla with the heaviest of the pollutants in the air, the irritants in the air down to our south. We'll have the complete forecast for you in just a moment. Stay connected to your clients and new customers using ABC7 Digital Media Services. Our team of professionals provide a wide array of digital services to help you get the most out of your website. We specialize in building and helping you maintain the most effective digital solutions for your business. It's vital that your online presence stands out, so our experts will equip you with the best resources available. Trust ABC7 Digital Media Services to give you the right tools to grow your business. If you're looking for the perfect trip that allows you to spend quality time with the family, then discover the great outdoors on an Alabama Black Belt adventure. Create unforgettable memories while hunting, canoeing, camping, and more. Or challenge yourself on Robert Trent Jones Golf Trail, now celebrating 25 years. And while you're here, enjoy a deep south dining experience. Book your adventure in one of our members' lodges or stay at the Renaissance Montgomery Hotel and Spa. Start planning an Alabama Black Belt adventure today. Coast Guard, we are taking on water. The United States Coast Guard. They secure our ports and waterways, protect our environment, keep drugs away from our kids, and save lives. It's dangerous work. And in times of triumph or tragedy, the Coast Guard Foundation answers the call to support Coast Guard members and their families. Learn more at CoastGuardFoundation.org. Hi, I'm Janelle Hale, founder and CEO of the National Breast Cancer Foundation. No one should face breast cancer alone. When I was diagnosed 36 years ago, there was no internet, and I had to make a decision with little information. Early detection saved my life. It could save yours too. To learn what every woman needs to know about breast cancer, visit nbcf.org slash hope. Who else has been taking your prescriptions? Keep your medicine and your family safe and secure. Mind your meds. To learn how we can help, visit the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids at drugfree.org. Me, pick me, me, me. Oh, come on, man. Tech lab. Oh, man, I love technology. Hey, yo, check out my new phone. Look at this right here. For years, the DeSoto Club has needed improvements. Join me in Boys and Girls Club of Manatee County as we raise money to build a brand new facility. It will be bigger and better, just like it was 40 years ago when I attended. Invest in kids, build great futures. First alert weather forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. So yesterday afternoon we started developing a little bit of a westerly wind flow and that westerly wind flow helping to increase the moisture across the region today. We have a dew point value of 75 at this point and our temperature held up a little bit by both the increased dew point values and the fact that we have a little more cloud cover around today at about 80 degrees. The heat index already at this hour 85. So it's a warm, muggy, humid start to the day. Kind of a kind of a really sweltering afternoon in store for us, I think. Uh, by 7 a.m., I think we'll probably see about a 20% chance of a shower or two popping up here and there across the region. That lingering through the morning hours till about 10, 10, 11, 12. We'll start to see about a 40% chance of a few scattered showers, maybe a thunderstorm near the coastline. And then as we head into the afternoon, the focus of those showers builds into inland areas while the coastal rain chance starts to go down a little bit. Then late in the day, as those inland showers begin to die down, it's possible that one or two of them may work their way back to the coastline. So we'll briefly up the rain chance about 7 p.m. to about 20% once again. 
So that's the way it's going to be. Generally inland showers, generally a push toward the other coast today with the heaviest of the rain located along the spine of the state or in the eastern parts of the peninsula. We've got a few scattered showers out in the Gulf right now. A couple of them have made it onshore, or at least close to one of them now located. The only one left really located down around the mouth of Charlotte Harbor, moving toward Punta Gorda. So in about 15 minutes, you folks will get wet uh, out here along 41 as it heads south through Punta Gorda. That is a very light shower and it'll be a very brief shower. Weather highlights today again in uh, include this westerly wind flow. And that is the kind of pattern that does promote this exact situation where you get those showers near the coast in the morning, pushed inland in the afternoon. And then if the flow is light enough, one or two of those showers could back build toward the coast and give us a chance of a rainfall towards sunset near the coastline. But really, it would only be one or two showers, so it's not a big chance. High pressure stays with us in this position for a couple more days. Then I think we'll start to see a little increase in moisture and we'll start to see a better chance of rainfall as we head into the weekend. Inland showers build, they gradually get pushed back toward the coast, a few of them, but basically it's the heaviest of the rain located inland. So that's the name of the game, isolated morning showers, inland drift, and then better weekend rain chances. Looking ahead to the 4th of July too, there might be a possibility of seeing a little bit of drier air work its way in. Here's the future cast for today and graphically we'll show you what I'm talking about. These few scattered showers popping up during the morning hours and then translating into inland areas as we head into the lunchtime hour. Some of this rain could be kind of heavy and the motion of these storms will be somewhat erratic because of the outflow boundaries interacting with each other and the, the mo motion rather slow. So you could get some fairly heavy rainfall in inland areas. Then some of these showers kind of work their way back toward the coast as they die out. Humid air in place right now. But if you look in the long term, a little area of low pressure kind of rotates across North Florida, giving us better rain chances over the weekend. Then some drier air starts to filter in, perhaps by 4th of July, reducing our rain chances just a little bit. Wouldn't that be great? 10 knot wind today out of the west, kind of uh, kind of sustained in that direction. 42, 40% 40 chance of rainfall today and tomorrow with a temperature of about 92, 90 degrees. Saturday, slightly better rain chances with that low moving through North Florida. And then as we head into next week, we start to see the rain chances drop just a little bit. So hopefully we'll be looking at uh, fewer rainstorms around for the 4th of July. Back to you. That'd be nice. Thank you, John. First alert traffic showing some issues on 301 in both directions as you cross, cross over the 15th Street East area, otherwise all clear in Manatee County. Checking farther south there. Let's see a little blip there as you start to come out of St. Armand Circle. For some reason, some early congestion there. Also along the Bayfront as you come from Mound to the 41301 intersection. A little blip there in Clark eastbound out by uh, Honoré. And then checking our next map, we'll find out there's just one little small uh, yellow spot in the uh, southbound lane as you approach uh, Bypass 41 near the island of Venice. A case of fentanyl-laced flyers in Houston now has law enforcement on guard in East Texas. A sheriff sergeant came into contact with a drug fentanyl that was on a flyer placed on a patrol car. He had to be hospitalized. Fentanyl can be deadly even if it's touched. No suspects identified, but the flyer claimed to be from a group called Targeted Justice. Now, they deny any involvement. This incident has police ready to counteract exposure to any opioid. Just a, a small exposure uh, can put that officer or other officers at risk. The fentanyl is typically coming out of, out of Mexico. Uh, we're in a border region, so we've gone ahead and purchased the Narcan and uh, special suits in case we do come in contact with that. They say right now they have no incidents of any people being exposed to the drug fentanyl. Never a dull moment. Still ahead on Good Morning Suncoast, AT&T raising the cost of a fee. The difference customers can expect. And next half hour, a nasty surprise for swimmers here in Florida. What you need to do about sea lice. Yeah, sea lice. 519 right now, 70 degrees in Atlanta. There's a nice shot of the downtown skyline there in the capital of Georgia. Old Ferris wheel toward the front as well in Centennial Park. You're watching Good Morning Suncoast on ABC7.
A promise was made, a promise that hit the beaches of Normandy, a vow that captured Iwo Jima, a contract that weathered Tet, a pledge that stormed the desert in Iraq, an IOU that braved IEDs in Kandahar. A promise was made to America's veterans. DAV fights to keep that promise, so all veterans and their families get the benefits and support they earned. For help, visit DAV.org. I am the resident district manager on the FAU campus for Chartwell. Whenever I see Haley, I do not see a person with a disability. I see a person with extraordinary abilities. Haley is always smiling, she's always on time, she gives fantastic customer service, and is always focused on any job that she's given. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to abilitieswork.employflorida.com. Are you a soccer mom or dad? Regardless of their age or experience level, when your kids play soccer or any other sport, there's one person on the sideline who is key to help recognize and seek medical care for sports-related concussion. It's you. You need to know the signs and symptoms of concussion, and you need to act if you think your child has been injured. Remember, when in doubt, sit them out. To learn more, go to cbc.gov concussion. 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004. There was this big bruise on my friend's face. I didn't want to see it. I didn't want to think her own nephew could have hit her. I didn't want to see it. My mother's bank account was emptied and a caregiver had taken control of it. I didn't want to see it. My father's refrigerator, there was hardly anything in it. That's unusual for him. It's tough to see that a senior citizen is being abused, physically, emotionally, sexually, or financially. Elder abuse is a crime. So see the signs, stop the crimes. I took my first handful of pills, and that's when all my priorities seemed to change. He would ask to use the bathroom in other people's homes. He just assumed that they would have medication. He'd go in their medicine cabinets and steal prescription drugs. I wish I knew really what these prescription pills were. We were so naive about the whole drug thing. These are all synthetic forms of heroin. Keep your medication locked up because you'll never notice that a pill is gone. Mind your meds. Learn more from the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids. Ever since I can remember, I've been intrigued by industrial design and the optimization. Wait, that's passion? Ever since I can remember, my passion has been industrial design. We need 3D printers for Miss Adams' engineering program so that we are ready to solve 21st century challenges. Impressive. Think It Up is a new initiative to support student-powered, teacher-led learning projects. Students and teachers, how can you spark great learning experiences in your classroom today? Think It Up. Tampa Bay Lightning have a new and improved practice facility now. The team put $6 million into the Ice Sports Forum in Brandon, along with upgrades to the rink itself. The facility has more than tripled the size. It includes hydrotherapy facilities, a theater, a video room. They've renewed their contract for another 20 years there, and those involved think it'll have a positive impact on the community as well. I think it makes a lot of impact. I mean, these kids get to get out there and skate on the same ice as, as their heroes get to skate on. Uh, that's it's pretty awesome. Plus, the players are approachable here, so it, it gives them uh, a chance to, to meet, say hello, watch them practice, see the dedication they have. The Ice Sports Forum is not just used by the Lightning. It's one of the busiest rinks in the nation. More than 100 adult and youth league teams skate there as well. A Chick-fil-A employee and customer teamed up to save a choking man in Texas. Their life-saving actions caught on surveillance video inside the restaurant last weekend. Here we go. A woman saw the man in trouble and began the Heimlich maneuver. An employee named Hunter Harris took over until the uh, food was dislodged. The man then went back to eating his meal after the incident. Some heroes there. Good to know the Heimlich. Apple and Samsung have officially declared peace after years of patent disagreements. The story in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, Apple and Samsung bury the hatchet after seven years. The two companies have settled their long-running patent dispute. The battle centered on how much Samsung should pay Apple for copying patented features into smartphones. Terms of the settlement were not disclosed. AT&T, meanwhile, has quietly raised an administrative fee for all of its nearly 65 million wireless customers. The fee more than doubled to $1.99. 
and that adds up an extra $800 million a year. AT&T told the website Verge it's a standard fee that covers cell site maintenance and other costs. Facebook wants to give you more control over what you see on your news feed. The social media site is testing a new feature called Keyword Snooze. It allows users to hide certain words for 30 days, helpful for TV and movie spoilers, as well as news stories you're tired of. Politics. Those are your Tech Bites. Tech Bites. Sponsored by Eloquis. I've always looked forward to what's next, and I'm still going for my best, even though I live with a higher risk of stroke due to AFib, not caused by a heart valve problem. So if there's a better treatment than warfarin, I'm up for that. Eloquis. Eloquis is proven to reduce stroke risk better than warfarin, plus has significantly less major bleeding than warfarin. Eloquis is FDA approved and has both. So what's next? Seeing these guys. Don't stop taking Eliquis unless your doctor tells you to, as stopping increases your risk of having a stroke. Eliquis can cause serious and, in rare cases, fatal bleeding. Don't take Eliquis if you have an artificial heart valve or abnormal bleeding. While taking Eliquis, you may bruise more easily, and it may take longer than usual for any bleeding to stop. Seek immediate medical care for sudden signs of bleeding, like unusual bruising. Eliquis may increase your bleeding risk if you take certain medicines. Tell your doctor about all planned medical or dental procedures. Eloquis, the number one cardiologist prescribed blood thinner. Ask your doctor if Eloquis is what's next for you. Once you get atrial fibrillation, you need to have a very close relationship with your primary doctor. Prevention is the whole ball game here, because once you have a stroke, you can't undo it. A year without stroke is a year that you can enjoy doing the things that you've worked all your life to finally get to do. You took care of yourself. You did what is necessary for you to be around one more year. And then next year, we'll celebrate one more year without a stroke. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> We're going to go out there to rain. Going to get wet. All right, here we go. Go, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, <laughs> Oh, yeah, yes. So much fun. Mwah. My name is Haley. I have fragile leg syndrome. I work with Chartwells at Einstein's at FAU. I like being up front and um, interacting with students. The students are very nice and very hungry. Having a job is a big ticket for independence. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to disabilitieswork.employflorida.com. My name is Luke Perry, and I am one million strong. I'm in the fight against colorectal cancer because I believe we can win it. Colon and rectal cancers are the second leading cause of cancer deaths among men and women in the U.S. Colon cancer is preventable. Know the risk factors and make sure to get screened. There are simple take-home options available. Take control of your health. Screening for colon cancer isn't embarrassing. It can be life-saving. To find out more about your options, visit fightcrc.org. The ABC7 First Alert weather app just got even better. It's easy to use once you download it. First, tell the app to follow you, so you get alerts pinpointed to exactly where you are. Then customize your settings with all the places you go, from the beach to grandmother's house. Get accurate alerts for everyone you care about. You can even pick which weather alerts and categories you want and what they sound like. More ways to customize and more ways to keep your family safe. Download the ABC7 First Alert weather app today. Everything all right? Actually, you know how Tom had knee surgery? Sure. We found out Brad's been taking his painkillers. It turns out he's been doing it for a while. Most people don't know what to say about drugs, but we do. Visit us at drugfree.org. You're watching Good Morning Sun Coast at 5.30. New information suggests North Korea may not be standing down when it comes to nuclear weapons. We'll share some surveillance photos. The report cards are in. We'll tell you how Sarasota and Manatee County schools rank in a statewide ranking. 
And tens of thousands of race fans will be on Lido Key Beach this weekend. We'll tell you what Moat Marine wants fans to do during the event this half hour on Good Morning Sun Coast. Welcome back. 5.30 right now. I'm Ray Collins. Stephanie Webb is off this week. It is Thursday, June 28th, and John Scalzi has the tales now. Some of you might see some rain. Some of you might not see some rain today. Yeah, I think inland residents have the best chance, no doubt about it. But uh, you know, there'll be some rain spread around the coastline as well, but not much. Uh, we're looking right now at a few scattered showers that are in progress out in Gulf waters. And most of that's going to remain to the north of us, and it's going to remain out in the Gulf. We had one lone shower in the process of falling apart in the mouth of Charlotte Harbor, and that's it. Otherwise, I think we'll have a fairly rain-free commute this morning. A few scattered showers out in the Gulf we'll keep an eye on, but even if they make it to the coast, it'll be a very light, very brief rainfall that would occur. Right now, we're looking at a little bit of cloud cover across the region. We have a big, bright, beautiful full moon out there. And of course, Saturn is the brightest that will ever be uh, this year as it's closest to the Earth. And uh, it's a quite a sight if you do get to see it, but you'll have to be uh, high up above the tree line. Plus, we've got some cloud cover out there kind of inhibiting the viewing just a little bit. Nice weather through the morning hours, I think. Best chance of rainfall for the coastal residents probably around the lunchtime period. Then everything begins to move into inland areas. 40% chance of showers today. A little bit better than it was yesterday in terms of our chances for rain. But still, not as much as it normally would be at this time of year. Daytime high, about 92. We'll have the weekend forecast for you coming up in a few. Right, talk to you soon. Thank you, John. Checking first alert traffic. Little blip there on State Road 64. As you drive away from the interstate, otherwise pretty clear right now in Manatee County. Checking farther south, the maps into the uh, northern half of Sarasota County. Still some issues out there as you come from Longboat Key towards St. Armand Circle. Very unusual to see delays out there right now. Uh, but that is the situation as you come uh, southbound on Longboat by uh, Lido Shores and through St. Armand Circle. Very unusual. Otherwise pretty clear in the, the uh, northern half of Sarasota County. And then our South County map will show us just some minor congestion on 41 southbound from Nokomis down toward Venice. Some breaking news from Charlotte County involving a domestic incident. The Sheriff's Office says a man barricaded himself in a home in Punta Gorda in the 27,000 block of Sunnybrook Road in Harbor Heights. Deputies have been there since 11 o'clock last night, and now the SWAT team is also involved as well. So too is our Marla Spence, who is live right now in Charlotte County. Marla. Good morning, Ray. We are continuing to follow breaking news out of Charlotte County. We spoke to a public information officer, and she tells us that this all started when a man by the name of Jacob Burrell entered into one of his relatives' homes uninvited around 1054 last night. And once he did, he then had an altercation and a fight with his relatives. He left that home and then came to this area in Port Charlotte. Now, I'm going to take a, give you a look at what we're seeing. We're seeing heavy police presence this morning. Over here on the 27,000 block of Sunny Brook Road, where that man has barricaded himself inside of a home. Now, deputies have been out here since about 11 last night trying to get Burrell out of the home. Right now, deputies do not believe that Burrell has any weapons on him at the time. And right now, a SWAT team is currently on scene. We are continuing to follow the story. You can stay with us on air on ABC7 and also our website at mysuncoast.com. Back to you, Ray. All right, thank you, Marla, live in Charlotte County. New satellite images are raising new doubts about North Korea putting down their nukes. Reporter Brian Todd explains. Tonight, new evidence that Kim Jong-un could still be tweaking, making improvements to his nuclear facilities, despite his promise to President Trump to draw down his nuclear arsenal. New satellite images from the monitoring group 38 North suggest Kim's regime is making upgrades to its nuclear research facility at Yongbyon. Upgrades which the group says are being done, quote, at a rapid pace. And how's the meeting going so far, sir? 38 North believes much of that work took place before President Trump's summit with Kim on June 12th. But it says some of the work probably occurred after the Singapore meeting, after Kim's promise to work to denuclearize. Now, if you were about to demolish your house, would you be upgrading the kitchen? I think that that definitely calls into question whether or not Kim Jong-un came to this table in good faith. 38 North says it believes Yongbyon is no longer producing plutonium crucial for nuclear weapons. But the latest photos show the Kim regime has made modifications to the cooling system for a reactor that has produced plutonium. 
it is an important reactor. And you can draw the conclusion, of course, that if they intended to operate it in the future and it operated more efficiently, then it could more efficiently produce plutonium. 38 North also says its photos show Kim's regime has built two new small buildings at Yongbyon, which it believes could be intended for VIPs. They could be outside inspectors intending to verify any new, new agreements, or they could be VIPs, whether it's visiting foreign press or North Korean leaders. Neither the White House nor U.S. intelligence officials are commenting on these new images tonight. 38 North's Joel Witt says some of these upgrades could be so routine that they may not mean that Kim's going back on his pledge to denuclearize. Other analysts believe they know which way the dictator will go when he's pressured for specific cuts to his arsenal. He has been very clear he wants to keep his nuclear weapons. He's declared that. Uh, it's in the North Korean Constitution. Nothing in the Singapore summit changes that. Which leads tonight to a lingering question. Why did Kim come to the table in Singapore? I think that they're hoping to so normalize and so uh, sort of sanitize Kim Jong-un's image. I mean, we saw this selfies with the Singapore prime minister, walks along Marina Bay Sands in Singapore, uh, handshakes with the president. He wants to sanitize his image so that he can then be included among other nuclear powers, like, for example, China or Russia. Well, analysts say this puts more pressure back on the White House to once again clarify any agreements they have with North Korea. Back here on the Sun Coast for the 15th year, the Sarasota County School District has earned an A grade. Sarasota is one of 20 districts in Florida that got an A. The district saw improvements in eight categories and maintained scores in three others with no decline in any category. The overall score also improved by four points compared to last year and the district is now ranked third statewide. Meantime, the Manatee County School District received a grade of B. The new grade improved the district's ranking from 39th to 33rd in the state. The outgoing school superintendent, Dr. Diana Green, says she is proud to leave the district on a high note. Grades are determined on student achievement, learning gains, graduation rates, and standardized testing. Now happening today, the interim superintendent for schools in Manatee County will be sworn in. Cynthia Saunders will serve during a search for a replacement for Dr. Green. The school board approved Saunders on Tuesday night. She has more than 28 years experience in education as a teacher, assistant principal, and principal. She's also served as deputy superintendent in Manatee County for the past three years under Dr. Green. The 34th annual Sarasota Powerboat Grand Prix is this weekend off Lido Key Beach. To make sure the marine life is protected, the event will have observers who will be watching the water to make sure no animals are in the racing zones. If they do spot one, the race will be postponed until the course is cleared. Moat Marine reminding race fans to also be on the lookout during the event as well. Simple things like wearing polarized sunglasses so you can see animals better through the water is, a, is really a big help. Also, you know, if you see marine debris, stop and pick it up, stow your trash before you take off. The Sarasota Police Department's Marine Patrol will have five boats on the water, both with a driver and a diver on board. Swimmers along Florida's coastline are getting a nasty surprise at the beach this summer. An itchy red rash from sea lice, tiny jellyfish larvae that can sting. State health officials say sea lice became a problem between March and August. That's the usual peak season for them. They're only as big as a fleck of pepper and float on the water's surface. You will start to feel something going on pretty immediately because it's a parasite. So, you know, they'll be moving around and you'll feel some itching and then you'll start to see the changes in the skin with the redness and the urticary or the hive-like reaction as time goes on. Well, here's some advice on how to deal with it. Women should wear two-piece suits, not one-piece suits, to reduce the surface area of swimwear that could trap larvae. Swimmers should also avoid wearing t-shirts in the ocean for the same reason and should change out of their bathing suits as soon as possible after leaving the water. Also be sure to thoroughly uh, wash bathing suits with detergent and a heat dry to kill any larvae that might have been trapped. Still ahead, you have heard the dangers of fast food, but this is different. What customers at a Hardee's restaurant were exposed to and the precautions they now have to take. This is a live look at Charlotte County, a domestic incident that began about 11 o'clock last night. Crews are on the scene 
The SWAT team is present. They're not being used right now. The sheriff's office says a man barricaded himself into a house in Punta Gorda in the 27,000 block of Sunnybrook Road in Harbor Heights. Again, we've got a crew on the scene update at the top of the hour or as events merit. First, let's switch gears and talk weather. Here's John Scalzi. So we are needing a little bit of rainfall around here along the coastline so that we can reduce some of these fire danger risks. The index now for Sarasota, Manatee and Charlotte counties have increased to moderate and are holding there over the last several days. Air quality index is good. No problems here. The particulates are the biggest contributor to a 32, which is in the good category. Air quality just fine. We'll have the complete forecast for you coming up in a few. There's nothing like this, this trail in Alabama. It just goes from the northern part of the state to the southern part of the state. We see all kind of different terrains, great value, great fun. We've been coming for 18 years. We started off with a group of eight, grew to 12, and grew to 16. And we love it because where else can you get world-class golf courses with world-class accommodations? To be able to play these type of courses in this environment and the difficulty uh, keeps us coming back over and over and over again. Selfless service is the principle that guides Army National Guard soldiers to be ready whenever disaster strikes. They have a stake in the well-being of the neighborhoods where they live and work. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. Selfless service, it's what inspires the men and women of the Army National Guard to be part of something greater than themselves. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn more. My name is Stephen Jaffe. Uh, the law firm's name is Farmer Jaffe. One of the beautiful things about Julius is he's always smiling and it becomes infectious. The fact that Julius has a disability has absolutely nothing to do with the quality of work that he's done. Just a, a great person you want on your staff. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to abilitieswork.employflorida.com. This is your brain. This is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? Um, yeah, I have questions. Prescription drugs aren't as bad as street drugs, right? Weed's legal, isn't it? Drinking is worse than smoking weed. Isn't it? Why it is heroin so, so addictive? Molly just makes you feel happy. I have questions. Mom? Dad, did you ever try drugs? They're going to ask. Be ready. Go to drugfree.org. A message from Partnership for Drug-Free Kids. We've all heard how military veterans adjusting to the civilian world may have certain issues. 30. If only everyone had this issue. No matter what challenge they face, Easter Seals is here for America's veterans. Meet Blue. Blue's not feeling well. The prescription? Generic medication. Blue wonders, do they really work as well as name brands? Yes, generics and name brand medications do work the same. Even though they may look different, generics have the same key ingredients. FDA approval is equally rigorous for generics to make sure they're as safe and effective as name brands. And Blue even saves some green, making him a little less, well, blue. Talk to your doctor about generics and visit FDA.gov slash generic drugs. Now your ABC7 first alert weather forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. 80 degree air temperature out there already at this hour with 85% relative humidity and a dew point higher today at 75. Put all those numbers together and guess what? You've got a heat index at this hour of 85 degrees out there. So it is sticky. It is thick and it'll lead to a few scattered showers around. We've also already seen a few, not too many, but a few around. About a 20% chance of a light sprinkler shower by around 7 a.m. this morning, progressing through 9, 10, 11 o'clock. Our rain chances will start to rise around lunchtime to 40%. And maybe even a thunderstorm or two. That's near the coast. Then, as we move into the afternoon, we'll start to see those showers begin to be pushed into inland areas where they'll become greater in number and a little bit more intense. Some of the storms in the inland areas can produce a fair amount of rainfall if you're lucky enough to be under one of them. Hardy, DeSoto County, the featured counties today, I think, for rain showers. 
As those showers move inland, coastal rain chances decrease to about 10%. And then as we head into the 7 p.m. hour, maybe a few of those showers might send out some boundaries that produce a rain shower or two again near the coast. So we'll up the rain chance at 7 p.m. just a little bit. Not significantly, but just a little bit. So we have a few scattered showers out in Gulf waters. Nothing really heavy. And then as we progress into the... Uh, Next couple of hours, I think we'll probably see a few more begin to build right along the coastline where now there are none. And uh, the one lone shower that, as I mentioned, we had down in the mouth of Charlotte Harbor has since dissipated as it moved into Punta Gorda. High pressure, the dominant weather feature for us, again provides us with this westerly wind flow, a pattern we see about 30% of the time during the summer here in Florida. And it's a pattern that, as I mentioned, tends to favor those inland showers. The showers gradually drift inland and really do explode on the other coast. I think the other coast will be the, the likely location for the biggest storms over the next several days, particularly in the southern tip of the state where the moisture is thickest. Now, over the course of the weekend, we'll have a little low pressure area kind of spin southward and move into the northern part of the state. Plus, we'll get a little bit of tropical moisture lifting northward, all of that combining to up the rain chance just a little bit as we head into the weekend. Isolated morning showers. An afternoon shower inland and better weekend rain chances. That's the name of the game for the next several days. Looking at the future cast, you'll watch those showers build along the coastline. Moving inland, they'll become greater in number as we head into the afternoon and more intense as well as we head into the later afternoon. Some of them laying down some pretty good rainfall. Then they'll gradually drift back to the coast, perhaps around 7 o'clock. Now, here's something interesting. There will be a little area of low pressure, as I mentioned, develop and move through parts of North Florida over the week, and that will increase the humidity for us. But then watch, rotating around a little packet of dry air that may just move in in time for the 4th of July. And that could limit our rain chances just a little bit as we head into the extended range forecast. Still a little early, we'll be refining that forecast, but initial hints are pretty encouraging for at least a little bit better chance for a fewer for fewer showers on the 4th. Uh, west wind coming in at about 10 today. Light chop, two foot seas, nice boating conditions today. We'll have 92 for a daytime high with a 40% chance of rain today and tomorrow. Then over the weekend, slightly better rain chances. Now, the thing is the pattern may start to change again as we head into next week. And although we are going to lower the rain chances, not on Monday, but starting on Tuesday, we may also see the concentration of showers kind of shift from inland areas back closer to the coastline. So we'll be keeping an eye on that, Ray. All right, thank you, John. Let's check first alert traffic now. 301 southbound, some congestion as you pass by State Road 70. Otherwise all clear right now in Manatee County. Checking the northern half of Sarasota County. Still some issues out there as you travel from Longboat Key towards St. Armand Circle southbound. Perhaps that's over the bridge right there as you travel past Moat Marine. A little blip there on Clark Road in the eastbound lane as you get past uh, Palmer Ranch area. And then our final map for the south will show nothing major, just some slowdowns on 41 southbound as you head from Nokomis down toward Venice. So time for a question. How much exercise do you get every week? Most of us aren't getting nearly enough. Experts say we should get, should get at least 150 minutes of moderate activity or 75 minutes of vigorous activity. That's about 10 minutes a day, vigorous. They suggest muscle strengthening activities at least twice a week, but according to the latest data from the Centers for Disease Control, less than 25% of us are meeting the goals outlined. Colorado is doing the best, and that's only 32.5% there. Many states in the southeast are missing the mark, like Alabama, Georgia, and yep, Florida. A historic and politically sensitive visit is coming to a close for Prince William. He's wrapping up his five days in the Middle East with a tour of Jerusalem's holy sites. He broke with convention this week as the first British royal to make an official visit to Israel and to the, and to the West Bank. He had a message for Palestinians as well, as well, saying, you have not been forgotten. He walked a fine line in calling for peace in the region. Hundreds of people waited in line to get a hepatitis vaccine in North Carolina yesterday after they ate at a fast food restaurant where an infected person works. It's just a fraction of the customers who may have been exposed to the disease at a local Hardee's. Tina Terry has the story.
Philip Davidson is one of hundreds who showed up here today after hearing the news. I didn't pay any attention to it until it showed the Hardee's. <laughs> I said, oh, goodness. He says a co-worker brought biscuits from this Hardee's on Little Rock Road in West Charlotte to his job two weeks ago. And this man ate two jumbo hot dogs there Saturday. It's scary. I mean, it made me think a lot about a lot of places you eat out at. Met County health officials have been dealing with a hepatitis A outbreak. 12 cases since the start of the year, more than double last year's cases. They say one victim worked at the Hardee's and was contagious as early as June 13th. His symptoms became severe enough on the 23rd that he is not he did not go back to work. He went to the doctor. They moved to get the word out to more than 4,000 customers who'd eaten there during that time frame and hundreds responded waiting outside this West Charlotte Health Department for free vaccination today. Mark Fritz works at Charlotte's airport and ate at Hardy's two weeks ago. There's enough problems out here. We don't need any more. Some are concerned about potentially hundreds of others who may have been exposed and then traveled through the airport back to their homes. At this point, all we know is that if, if they ate there, there was the potential for exposure. The number of vaccinations so far is 900 customers. Those exposed to hepatitis A must be vaccinated within 14 days of exposure for the inoculation to work at all. We continue to track some breaking news this morning from Charlotte County involving an overnight domestic incident. This is the live shot of the scene where crews are working on getting a man out of a house. They're not sure if he's armed. I don't think so. It began last night at 11 p.m. This is in Punta Gorda on Sunnybrook Road in Harbor Heights. SWAT team is also present. So too is our live crew. We'll talk to Marla Spence at the top of the hour right here. I'm Good Morning Sun Coast. Soldiers in the Army National Guard live up to a set of time-honored principles. I will always place the mission first. They stand ready to respond to any crisis. I will never accept defeat. They serve in their communities as citizens and as soldiers. I will never quit. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. I will never leave a fallen comrade. Learn more at NationalGuard.com. We answered the call of duty and left our homes to serve in far off lands. Now we answer another call, this time at home, in our own communities, to respond in times of chaos, to use our strength, our skills, and our experiences to bring hope amid devastation and destruction. Together, as a team of brothers and sisters, we're continuing our mission to make this country a little stronger and a little better each day. We are Team Rubicon. You now have the power to prioritize your Facebook feed and get local news and information from the team you trust. Go to the ABC7 Sarasota page on Facebook. Give us a like, then click following and choose see first. That's it. Customize even more by choosing notifications. Choose breaking news, posts, live videos, anything you want to see in real time. Take control of your news feed and stay connected to what's happening in your community with ABC7 on Facebook. Iguanas only reproduce one month out of the year. That's because they suffer from erectile dysfunction. <laughs> According to the Department of Homeland Security, what color represents the lowest threat level? Is Caucasian a color? <laughs> Which casino game has the best odds for a payout? The ATM. Funny you should ask. <laughs> Weekdays at 4.30 and 11.30 on ABC7. Hunger is a growing problem in our area, and a huge number of Suncoast residents are suffering in silence. It could be your coworker, your child's classmate, or your friend fighting to secure their next meal. But you can help. ABC7 is partnering with local organizations to help feed the Suncoast. Go to mysuncoast.com slash hunger to join the fight. Help us. Help the hungry.
Here are the headlines on the Sun Coast as you awaken this morning. Grades are out for area school districts. The state gave Sarasota an A and ranked it third in the state. Manatee has a B and is 33rd out of 67 counties. Big turnout for last night uh, in downtown Sarasota for a forum with visiting students from Stoneman Douglas High School. The student activists are in the midst of a nationwide tour on gun control and voter registration. Back to the drawing board for city manager Tom Barwin. He gave a budget last night that would increase taxes, increase taxes for Sarasota. But in a 3-2 vote, commissioners told him to go back and find more places to cut. Next hour, President Trump says he is honored that Supreme Court Justice Anthony Kennedy decided to retire during his presidency. And out of Charlotte County, the sheriff's office says a man barricaded himself in a house last night in Punta Gorda on Sunnybrook Road in Harbor Heights. We've got a live crew on the scene for that one. But first, one last check of the forecast from John Scalzi. So we're looking at a few highlights today that you can take home with you. We'll have some morning showers near the coast for the next several days. That'll be followed by inland afternoon showers. And then a few of those inland showers may backbuild and bring an isolated shower to the coastline during the sunset period. Also, better weekend rain chances. We'll talk about that and take a look at the 4th of July coming up in a few. All right, thank you, John. Just a quick reminder, if you have a chance to check out our social media pages, John and Stephanie and myself, we're all on Facebook. You can check out mine at Ray Collins, ABC7. And if you do, you'll see plenty of behind-the-scenes pictures of what happens during the commercial breaks. Just plenty of uh, good fun. So check out those sites. Make sure you like the page while you're there. We're also on Instagram as well. So it's not just the channel itself, ABC7. We're also all over the Internet, social media, and, of course, mysuncoast.com as well. We'll go back live to Charlotte County next hour. Also have more on last night's event involving the uh, Stillman Douglas students who were here last night for a rally of sorts. That's all next hour. We'll see you then right here in the second hour of Good Morning Sunshine.